This is uh, Amiko Cowder, and I'm here today with uh, Sean O'Rourke. He is the lead visiting vehicle officer for Space Dragon. We are inside the International Space Station flight control room. In this room is where the uh, team's Orbit 2 team has been monitoring the systems aboard the space station. Meanwhile, there is a uh, vehicle that is scheduled to launch tomorrow morning at 3.55 a.m. This is the SpaceX Dragon. And so, again, um, we're here to talk with Sean. Welcome, and thank you for joining us, Sean. So um, first, let's just talk about your a little personal background. Just tell me, you know, what is your background and education background, and how did you get find your way here to NASA? Well, I grew up in uh, Cranston, Rhode Island, and uh, I went to Clarkson University uh, in upstate New York, Potsdam, New York. I uh, came down here right out of college and uh, hired on at United Space Alliance doing trajectory design, working the pre-flight uh, analysis for space shuttle, uh, and then I moved into the front room as a uh, uh, shuttle rendezvous officer. I uh, worked a lot of the space station assembly flights and got to work uh, Hubble repair missions and I had a lot of fun doing that and uh, now that that is over I'm over in the visiting vehicle office and uh, our office are the uh, trajectory experts for the space station um, in, how, in dealing with the visiting vehicles that come up and bring cargo and crew. Okay great well we're happy to have you here. So first tell me what um, Explain your role as a visiting vehicle officer. What does that mean? So uh, our group, uh, we have expertise in guidance and navigation and trajectory, and uh, our role is to talk to the uh, partners that uh, are sending the vehicles up to the space station, and uh, we help them interface with the space station and let them know what the space station is going on. Um, the two vehicles coming together, there's a lot of vehicle-to-vehicle uh, -vehicle coordination that has to go on there, so uh, we help monitor that, make sure that all uh, links up together really well. Um, there's two different kinds. There's docking vehicles and there's grappling vehicles, um, and I'm in the grappling vehicle side, and so things like the HTV vehicle and now the two new COTS vehicles, they'll be grappled by the space station arm. Uh, so we also have to know a fair amount about the tools that the crew uses to monitor the vehicle as it approaches from below. Um, and is there more, because um, you just talked about some of the, the, one of the, you know, some of the vehicles are like the automatic ones that don't require, you know, the crew's help in, in pulling the, you know, the, with the grapple and that sort of thing. And, but also with this one, the SpaceX Dragon, this is going to be one that's going to require some robotics operations. So if you will just explain to me, I mean, are you, is there more involvement if it's a, uh, a grapple type? Well, really, the, the bulk of our work, and really this is true for all of spaceflight, 99% of the work happens before launch. Um, you know, making sure that the vehicle is uh, built to the requirements, um, making sure that the plan that is uh, on board the vehicle, the vehicle is going to execute these maneuvers autonomously with ground monitoring and making sure that that all meets the safety requirements, and then making sure that we have the proper insight to verify that uh, even though the plan may have been safe, that we need to make sure that we're watching the vehicle as it's happening to make sure it continues to be safe. Sure. And so with this particular vehicle, what has your experience been? I mean, how long have you been working specifically for this uh, particular I've, vehicle? Stock? I've been on this team for about two years or so, so okay. uh, I've got to know a fair amount about how the vehicle works, which has wow. been really interesting. Um, you know, compared to the space shuttle, that these newer vehicles, they're much more autonomous. They're, you know, they have so much more computing power and they can, you know, encode a lot more automated decision making into the vehicle. Um, so being able to learn how that all works has been really interesting. Good. Well, I'm glad to know that you ha you have some insight on the vehicle because I do have some questions about it. If you will just explain to um, to me what is the significance of this vehicle um, as opposed to the other vehicles have that have flown before and, and docked to the International Space Station. What is the significance of this one? Sure. Well, in in first of all, in a lot of respects, it's fairly similar to HTV, uh, but it was kind of built. You know, they. The Dragon team, I think, probably learned a lot, and we learned a lot from our experience with HTV that has gone into the planning for Dragon. So it, it approaches from below um, and is grappled by the arm, similar to HTV. The really neat thing about Dragon is, uh, compared to other cargo vehicles anyway, Dragon is the first vehicle that actually brings things down to Earth from us. Uh, some, almost all the other cargo vehicles basically burn up on re-entry, so we can use it for trash disposal and stuff, but this is our first opportunity to be able to bring things home on a cargo vehicle. Okay. And so that's going to add some great capability, I'm sure, especially for um, hardware experiments and whatnot that we are ferrying to and from the International Space Station. Right. So the capability we lost with the space shuttle that uh, we would be anxious to get back. And also, there is the commercial part of this vehicle. Can you talk about that? 
Uh, well, one of the things that's different about the whole commercial program is that uh, we try and stay out of the details of how the problems are solved. We levy the requirements, then you know, first are the safety requirements, and then it really delegate a lot of the responsibility to figuring out how to solve that to the commercial uh, teams. And it'd be really, you know, they have a different perspective, and you know, they want to take this vehicle and use it to uh, provide services to other customers as well. So they have to weigh our requirements against what other markets they see out there, which would be great because if they can take this vehicle and make money other ways, then that should bring our costs down mm -hmm. in the long run. Okay, great. That's interesting. So um, if you would also go through just the series of um, what you know, what's going to take place after it launches. So it launches, it's in orbit, and then what happens next? Sure. Well, the, the SpaceX team has done a lot of verification work pre-launch. Um, after they get on orbit, though, we also have some additional gates they have to go through, which are to demonstrate some basic capabilities before we'll agree to let it come to the space station. Um, after launch, they'll be collecting some absolute navigation data using GPS, and the SpaceX team will take a look at that and make sure it's uh, performing per the requirements, and they'll give us that data, and we'll take a look at it and make sure. So that'll be one of the first gates that we go through is after they get on orbit, just the basic vehicle's capability to figure out where it is and where it's going. Uh, also some safety critical functions like the abort functionality. So they'll test that out where it's much further away from the space station and we don't have to rely on it. And so we can watch it in, or in the orbit, see how it really does perform per all the analysis and we'll get comfortable with that before we let them come in. Um, another big one would be on the day before grapple, uh, they will do a flyby below the space station and a little more accurate navigation capability is for the space station to send GPS data of to, out to the Dragon vehicle and it will calculate a good solution that is much more accurate um, of the Dragon's position relative to the space station. And so uh, we'll take a look at that data overnight before capture day and make sure that is all performing uh, how we expect. And then we'll, we'll come in and let them come tra grapple on the next day. Okay, great. And now you mentioned demo flight. Um, so what, explain demo flight for, for me, if you will, and then also explain when does it become the vehicle that we approve and say that this is going to be the vehicle that's going to ferry uh, cargo to and from the space station? Sure. Well, SpaceX already has the, the next vehicle is uh, is being built at the SpaceX facilities. In fact, it may be uh, completed. I can't remember the schedule. But uh, so this flight is a demonstration flight where they're going to demonstrate their capability to get to the ISS. So we do have some cargo on board, but it's if something were to go wrong, it's stuff that we can live without for quite a while. Um, assuming everything goes well on this flight, if they get uh, up to the space station and, and home again, um, the very next flight, uh, which I believe is sometime mid to late summer, I forget the schedule, but uh, that will be a real cargo flight that starts their CRS, commercial resupply uh, con services contract. So this, uh, assuming all goes well, this will be the one demonstration flight, and then we'll jump right into the to the commercial resupply. Wow. Uh, if something, you know, this is a test flight, things are, you know, you know, it's very possible things can go wrong. Uh, if they don't get all the way to the space station, then we'll try again another time. Sure. Well, they say space flight is a sport, so we have to be flexible with it, right? Yeah. So, um, and so you just answered my next question was going to be that, you know, assuming the mission is a, is a success, what are the, what's the next step? And that would be it right there that you mentioned. So um, if you will, real quick, just give us a um, the last update of the launch. It is, again, scheduled to take off from the Kennedy Space Center at 3.55 a.m. Central Time. And so do you have anything new to uh, share? Actually, on the launch side, that's really the commercial partners uh, field. And I, I know they had an internal flight readiness review yesterday, and they rolled out to the pad this morning. So it sounds like everything's uh, on schedule. Uh, so we'll pick up uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning on console, and uh, hopefully everything will go great. Great. Thank you very much for coming out and talking with us. Again, the uh, SpaceX Dragon is scheduled to launch tomorrow morning at 3.55 a.m. Um, from the Kennedy Space Center. We will have live coverage for you here on NASA television at 2.30 a.m. Central Time. And uh, also up next, after following our ISS update today at noon, will be a... Uh, pre-launch uh, pre briefing, and so you can tune in here at NASA Television for that information for SpaceX. Keep watching. Thanks.